Serious people, welcome back to Greenshore Homestead. Yeah, this is Paul, and uh, if you saw my video on uh, replanting the biannuals from the root cellar, you'll recognize these. Uh, those are the onions that I replanted. Uh, you can see how they've come right up out of that wire cage. And then uh, that is the uh, kale. And I had to take the wire cage off of there, like I said I'd have to, and you know, I've surrounded it with that chicken wire that keeps the rabbits from, from eating it. So um, the kale, you can see is extremely healthy and very large. It has not gone to flower yet, but it will be before too much longer. The onions have gone to flower, but I have some other onions that uh, overwintered in the garden. These are the ones that I overwintered in the, the uh, basement. I've got some that overwintered in the garden, and uh, the flowers on those are much further along. So I'm gonna go show you what those look like uh, in, the, in the garden. Okay, so these are uh, also uh, red onions, and uh, these are the same age as the ones that we just saw over there in the black uh, pot, but um, these stayed out in the garden. Uh, they, they, they were mulched with the, 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 the hay, but they overwintered and lived through uh, the winter. Uh, we did have a pretty easy winter, so I'm not surprised that happened, but I'm not always going to let that happen because, um, I mean, I'm not always going to trust that is what I'm trying to say because sometimes we can have a more severe winter and I don't want to take, take a chance of losing those onions. So I will still continue to collect onions to take into the basement to uh, save, to replant for seed the following year. But this is always nice when you get that, that extra bit of seed to harvest from ones that did actually live through the winter. So you can see these uh, little flower florets here. Each one of those is going to be full of about 10 uh, onion seeds when this is fully mature. That, that ball is going to grow. It's going to become bigger than a baseball, but a little smaller than a softball. So you can see the number. I mean, that's a lot of little flower heads there, and each of those is going to contain be between 5 and 10 uh, onion seeds. The onion seeds are going to be black, and when when this flower opens up and the seed head or you know the flower heads here die back and turn brown, they're going to turn a, a tannish brown and and be really dry. That's when you're going to want to come harvest your onion seed, and you're just going to go ahead and cut this off down here, where you got a little handle here to hold on to. Put the, turn this onion uh, floret upside down in a paper bag, and then just shake it, and and it'll all the Onion seeds will fall, come flying out of those uh, um, flower heads, and then you got your your onion seeds all nicely kept in a brown paper bag. And you want to mark the bag red onion or yellow onion, and so on, uh, just so you know which ones are which, because they're going to look identical. The seeds will. And then uh, you can, if you want to, you can store them in those brown bags, or you can make little seed packets like I do. Whatever you want to do, you just want to label the year and the variety. <coughs> so. Uh, over here, we have the carrots and the beets. If you saw that video on the biennials, you'll recognize the where, where I planted these, and you'll recognize the uh, the five beets, and I think it was seven carrots that we got. And then we have an additional carrot over there in the uh, compost. Now you can see that that is really, really taking off, but that is because it's growing in pure compost. Um, I've also got some lettuce and some dill in there. Uh, that lettuce there has also gone to seed with the yellow flowers on it. That's a different topic though, so we'll get back to the carrots. Uh, you can see all the, the florets on the top of those carrots. And then down yonder on the shop, you can see the pole beans are starting to climb up the, uh, the side of the, the building there. If you saw my pole bean video, you'll, you'll understand what's happening there. <coughs> but these uh, <coughs> carrot florets, you can see the white there, that it very much resembles the Queen Anne's lace. And uh, the, 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 it'll go from the white flower and then to this uh, green head here. And all of these um, little guys here, each of those little, little uh, pellets is going to be a carrot seed. So on each of these florets, we've got about 15 carrot seeds. And <clears throat> then, you know, so it's 15 times however many uh, flower heads there are there. And uh, that's going to go from white to green to brown. This one here is starting to actually brown up. And it's when, when those seeds are completely dry and completely brown, that's when you're going to want to harvest them. And then the <coughs> same thing goes over here with the beets. 
uh, each each one of these individual little berries here little tiny berries that's going to be an individual beet seed so you can see how many beets we're going to beet seeds we're going to be able to harvest just off of these five um, beets uh, there there you see they're a little bigger uh, each of those is one beet beet seed so that gives you a very good representation there of, of you know how large the beet seeds are and how many you're going to get just off of five beets and I, I have additionally seven more beets growing up by the house so I'm going to be able to give away a lot of beet seed this year and probably some carrot seed um, the carrot like I said uh, resembles Queen Anne's lace and you want to make sure there's no Queen Anne's lace growing near the carrot because it will cross pollinate another thing it will cross pollinate with is the dill see that that flower head there on the dill looks very similar to um, the uh, carrot and and in fact they will cross pollinate so I left this dill's head here just so I could show you what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pull this off pull all these off and uh, that's not going to hurt the dill in fact it's going to branch out a little more because I did that now I can still leave that dill growing there because um, I pulled the seed heads off but we don't want a bee to come in here and gather pollen from this dill and then transfer it to the carrots while the carrots are forming seed. That, that would be a bad thing. So I wanted to show you that. Now I'll just take these uh, dill heads and throw them over there in the uh, compost pile. You can see right there I've got where I've walked through already um, yesterday and pulled a bunch of the, the dill heads off. So, um, so that's that's your biannuals uh, consisting of the onions, the beets, and the carrots. And then over here we have the uh, onions that I planted from seed and the beets that I planted from seed. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here on the biannuals and then I'll uh, talk to you about those, those beets and the, the, the onions that I uh, started from seed. Did a video on that too. So this is Paula Greenshire. Thanks for watching. If this helps you out at all, please give me a subscribe and give me a click on the like button.